Why words work? Five words to know in English. With your host David Corcoran. Hello and welcome to episode fourteen. And if you've already been watching, you'll know that I have had several guests on Why Words Work. And today I have another very special guest for you. Marika Dubiel is her name, and I'm going to bring her in in just a moment. But I'd like to mention a few words about Marika. Originally from Poland, Marika's life is all about learning. Apart from learning six languages, she's also learned a strategic mind sport go and salsa dance. She won international championships in both. She also likes helping others learn, especially through e-learning and coaching. She works as a full-time learning designer, and in her spare time, is active at Toastmasters. She just started sharing her approaches to learning. On her own YouTube channel, Master Amuse, and we'll find out more details from Marika about Master Amuse a little bit later. So let's bring in Marika, Marika Dubiel, our digital learning expert. Welcome to Why Words Work. How are you? Thank you, David. Can you hear me? I hear you very well. Yes. Perfect. Yes. Thank you How for are you? Here. I'm pleasure. excited. Yes, we're excited as well. And as you know, why words work is really your five words, five words that are important to you that you're going to explain. So I'll read the word and the definition, and then we'd love to hear your interpretation. So let's get started. Our first word is synchronicity: the happening by chance of two or more related or similar events at the same time. Synchronicity. Tell us about it, Marika. So that's the first word that came to my mind when I saw on LinkedIn that you, David, started with this beautiful channel because I've been also considering starting my own channel. So when this happened, I thought, what a better word to describe it! And I would never, probably, I wouldn't use this word in Polish, never ever. It's called synchronicność, but we actually never use it. Maybe it's in a written academic language, but I feel that in English it's more. Accessible somehow, and I really liked how it described the situation that brought me here. Actually, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and absolutely, we came together through Toastmasters and synchronicity. Mm -hmm. So uh, we could say that perhaps, yeah, it's it's more than perhaps chance, but really that alignment. Yeah, it's a great word. I love it. Synchronicity. Uh, yeah, let's have a look at your next word. Transition: the quality of being suitable or right for a particular situation or occasion. Transition.、Mm -hmm. I really like to highlight the the quality because when I'm thinking about this word in English, it's more about the process of like process of transitioning of getting somewhere. But when I'm thinking about again in Polish, it's more often used as a noun that means a change, and ex exactly this type of change of becoming suitable to a particular situation and occasion. And you mentioned that my whole life is all about learning. And we hear learning and coaching left and right. You have like business coaching, performance coaching, lifelong learning, individual learning, all that stuff.、Mm -hmm. But it seems that it's kind of forgotten that the whole point of these activities is to become more suitable to a particular situation or occasion, to become more effective in a new job, for example, or in a new country. So I wanted to highlight this word as well because I think that. That's something that might be an, a, a small aha moment for your audience as well. Yes, and yes, absolutely. There is this difference also between like English and Polish. And Polish, yeah, wonderful. I love that. So, because you're you're Polish, but you're living in Austria. I'm Australian and living in Austria. So we're we're in different parts of Austria, but it was a transition culturally. You often hear hear of cultural transition as well, and becoming more suitable, as you said, to a new situation.、Mm -hmm. Uh, so, how do you find living in Austria, for instance? How was your transition to Austria? Oh, so the first time I came to Austria, it was a disaster、mm -hmm. <laughs> because I ended up in quite a small village, and I really didn't find my place there. I couldn't connect to anybody. I also didn't speak the language. There were so many barriers to overcome, and when that Transition failed. I decided to go back to the Netherlands and do a master degree and get an extra year to improve my German.、Mm -hmm. Then I came back to Austria after that year, and that was that went better. And now I've been living in Austria since then for about I think five years by now. Gosh,、yeah. the time is flying. <laughs>、yeah. But I I think. I think I found my own. You know, I became suitable for this place. <laughs> hey, 
Yeah, wonderful. And you said in, in, in your introduction, you speak six languages. I know Polish, therefore, English, we're speaking, and you know German. And what are your other three languages? The other three are Dutch, Russian, and Japanese. Amazing. Amazing. So you're really a, a polyglot and can, I guess, successfully transition from one language to another when you need to as well. It was so hard. Uh, yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, I haven't met anyone else who speaks six languages. So thank you for sharing that with us. So talent, someone who has a natural ability to good to be good at something, especially without being taught. Are you a talent at language? I don't consider myself a talent, actually, David. And when I was at school, I was really good at mathematics. And until I was 17, my path was basically in this kind of beta sciences way. It was only the last year that I decided that I'm kind of bored with maths and I want to change. So I transitioned to languages. And the reason I chose this word is because I really have an allergy to this word. Mm. I see this, this word and I hear it so often. You have talent recru recruiters and you have talent development, especially in the companies. But the companies recruit the talent. And then they pick 1% of the talent they recruited to develop the talent in the company. And the reason why I have an allergy to this word in the, is this strong um, connection. It has strong connotation. It has with natural ability. Mm -hmm. And that, to me, goes against the growth mindset, against the possibility to learn. So the word I prefer to use is predisposition. Mm -hmm. That, you know, that something might come easy to you. Yes. But I really, like, I fight a war on talent. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's a great, a great, and, and thank you for sharing that, words that you have an allergy to. I love that phrase. And you're absolutely right. You know, this war on talent, talents, talent, you know, find your talent. It's really find what is your disposition. I love mm -hmm. that word you used. And find, find what makes you maybe stand out a little bit, but find out where also that feels good. Sometimes we can feel really good doing an activity that we're not talented at in the beginning, but we grow to become more talented, for instance. So I, I don't know, you mentioned Toastmasters, which we both are. When you mm -hmm. joined Toastmasters, did you feel like you had a disposition for public speaking or was it something that you really developed as a skill that you know now how to use? So when I joined Toastmasters, I mean, I've been on stage before because I really like dancing and performing in general, but I didn't really speak or, I, and especially in German, the time when I came to Toastmasters here, it was in German and I had absolutely no confidence that I could speak in German. And the kind of pinnacle of this five years journey so far, was it five or four? Actually, I can't even remember. But uh, this spring we organized quite a big event and I, ten I was the moderator in German and maybe to an outsider I somebody could say that I have a talent for German but actually it was a long 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 journey and a lot of preparation and practice so that's also one of the reasons why I would encourage people to think in different terms not like either I have it or not but more about, okay, what do I like and what could I develop? Which skills could help me in future? Wonderful. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And I guess that's the kind of coaching uh, and work that you do with people then to really help them. Uh, and we're going to hear about your YouTube channel uh, a little bit later. Perhaps you have some ideas about how people can influence themselves. So that's wonderful. Let's have a look at your next word. Value, the importance or worth of something for someone. Value. So since you mentioned coaching, that's the only context where I actually like this word, talking about things that are intrinsically important to us, such as honesty or empathy or um, learning even, or joy or courage. All these things are values to me. And yet again, I see that very often this word is used in context that kind of leads it to lose its meaning. And that's mm -hmm. where it becomes a, an over allergy that I have. Mm -hmm. And this context is especially in phrases like something valuable, but used in the very generic context, like valuable insights, valuable research, valuable feedback, when you don't even highlight what was valuable about it, but just use it just because everybody uses the word. Or another context is in combination with adding. So 
how can we add value or this program will really add value to your life or even value added tax. These are all the phrases I would like to just kill and never see again. But I guess we don't have better phrases yet. So I guess I need to put up with them still for some time. How is sure. it for you? Well, I, I definitely agree. Uh, you know, words that are overused, they, they lose their value. They lo- oh, there you go. I've used it. <laughs> they lose their meaning is what I meant to say. They lose the fact that, you know, we are, like you mentioned, talent and value. So, so many companies will say, yeah, we value our employees, but how are they actually living those meaningful words? And often they are not living up to those standards that they set mm-hmm. for themselves. And it, you're right. It is about, well, where do I add value and how can I do that? But ultimately it comes down to a list of skills like we talked about talent and value, a list of things that you can do either very well or learn to do better and get better at. And therefore those become, you know, things that you can bank on, things that you can sell that people want from you. So it's not so much these bold statements, but let's get into nitty gritty. Let's get into ways in which you can help somebody. And we, as coaches, we could be active listeners, for instance. That's not a value or a talent. That's something that you work on and you feel is important to the coaching process. Uh, And of course, there are many other skills that go in with that. So yeah, I really thank you for bringing two words that, you know, can can really also rub people the wrong way. You know, if, if you're in a meeting and people are going on about value and talent, that might actually disengage you from the meeting. Uh, And so we have to also be aware of why words work. They work positively and negatively. And I think this is a a really great insight that you bring to our subscribers and viewers today. So thank you. That's really great. Game is one of your last words here. An activity providing entertainment or amusement. Game. Tell us about game. Since you just mentioned the words that can have like positive and negative um Wirkung. For some reason, I have a German word yes. like uh-huh. effect maybe on you. Um, that's one of them. And the reason why is, again, my Polish roots. Because in Polish, this word, game, is gra. And when I say gra, I immediately, my brain immediately gives me other Polish words with this word included, which is grać, to play, wygrać, to win, and przegrać. And the last one means to lose but also to complete a game. And that's an interesting, maybe a bit negative connotation that in Polish, if I say I completed a game or I lost, I would use the same word. And mm-hmm. sometimes I wonder if, you know, if that's the reason why Polish people are so serious and hardworking <laughs> because yeah. nobody wants to be a loser by wasting time on playing games. Ah. Um, and an important lesson that I uh, that I had was exactly with this mind sport game you mentioned in the beginning, the go- game of Go. I learned it purely by accident because I wanted to study Japanese. And at my in my home city, this was a part of a Japanese culture club. So I got to learn the game. I started playing it. And because of this, a few years later, I could go to Japan and China to participate in some tournaments. And I think now... of people I know are Go players as well. So it's like lots of good things came from this and it's become quite an important part of my identity. And it also helped me change the, you know, this relationship with game, that game is kind of like a waste of time, making you lose and so on. It could be something beautiful and also contribute quite a lot. You can also develop a lot of skills so it can add quite some value. Yeah, and, <laughs> value. and it sounds like, too, a transition from, as you said, three or four meanings to the word game in Polish. But what mm-hmm. does it really mean in English? Whereas for those who are watching, now we know that there are multiple ways to talk about game in other languages. And I think that's a really interesting mix in having you on as someone who speaks six languages that looking at words in different languages and and what comes with that. And that's one of the reasons I I do this series is to help people in English for those who aren't perhaps native English users or haven't and aren't uh, regularly in an English speaking environment. So a great insight. Thank you on, on game. 
And I'm sure you've got many words. So perhaps we could have other another conversation down the track where we talk about other words from the languages that you know and how they do translate or don't translate uh, within within that context. So um, sounds amazing. I'm really open to it. I can, you know, it's a positive thing about speaking many languages. But sometimes it takes me so much time. Sometimes I'm so nitpicking when I choose my words, especially in at work. Yes. So. Yes, it, it's like double-edged sword. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, let's let's review your five words mm -hmm. now. And I always love my guests to say the words with the meaning that you want to give them. And we'll listen carefully now to how you say them. Mm -hmm. So synchronicity for me, it's when two or more things happen at the same time. Transition is the quality of being suitable for something. And that's the point of learning or coaching. Talent is a natural ability that you have and the word that I start a war on. And I would prefer to use the word predisposition as something that you can like have, something that could come easy to you, but you can develop. Value, I like this word, especially in the coaching context, what is important to you personally and what kind of guides you in life, in your decisions or behaviors. And the game is could be life, could be an activity, but it is something that gives us enjoyment and amuses us. Wonderful. So there are Marika's five words. And uh, Marika, how can people tell us a little bit more uh, in a few sentences about Mastery Muse? And I'll pop up some details now for people to check it out. Mm -hmm. So Mastery Muse is, uh, <laughs> is my hobby project at the moment uh, and it actually developed through Toastmasters a little bit. After being at Toastmasters for such a long time, I kind of decided that I wanted to share my knowledge on a bigger stage and what bigger stage can you find than YouTube? Absolutely. And with my knowledge, I mean really the, the approaches or the concepts or strategies or tools that helped me acquire my skills, like those languages or win championships. So I definitely believe that each of us has some individual strengths. And if we can all kind of develop them and find what's how we can use them in specific contexts, mm -hmm. that that's my contribution to making the world a little bit better. Yes. Maybe to sum up this channel in just two words or like two phrases, the Short point is to help you learn like an expert and think like a coach. Yes. And my last video that I uploaded is about one of my key favorite concepts. It's called self-efficacy. And that's actually the belief that you can do something. So I feel this is the very core and the very good starting point on any learning journey to think about this concept and your own, you know, your own starting point. Yeah. Wonderful. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that. And my dog, I don't know if you hear her in the background. She agrees with you. I'm oh, hearing my dog, my dog bark behind us. So, uh, you know, silly, silly jellyfish there. But certainly Mastery Muse, please check it out on YouTube uh, with Marika. And it's been a real pleasure to have you on uh, Why Words Work today, Marika. So thank you for being here. Please also, uh, you're available on LinkedIn. So Marika Dubiel, digital learning expert, find her on LinkedIn. Check out her YouTube channel, Mastery Muse. And Marika, thanks for being here today. Let's have you on again to talk more about the, the cross-functionality of words across many languages. Thanks for joining it's us. It's been my pleasure. Thank you so much, David. Thank you for having me. Pleasure. Why words work? Five words to know in English.